Today we are going to talk about my favorite open question in physics. The question is simple and intuitive. It is also foundationally very important while also having practical implications uh, if it can be solved. To explain the open question, let's go to a thought experiment uh, that is quite general. Our thought experiment will be really similar to the thermalization video on this channel. We will ask, how does static equilibrium emerge from quantum dynamics? Let's imagine we have a closed, isolated quantum system sitting in a pure state psi, and the system will be governed by the Hamiltonian H. For the purpose of this video, we will assume we are modeling some fermionic or magnetic system on a lattice. If we solve the Hamiltonian and find the energy eigenvectors, we can label the eigenvectors like we usually do. Under our assumption, there is a finite number of energy eigenvectors as long as we have a finite dimensional lattice. We can break up our pure state psi, which is our initial condition, in terms of the energy eigenbasis. From here, as usual, the time evolution is easy. Solving the Schrodinger uh, equation, as we've done in the past so many times, we get the following generic equation to evolve our pure state. We can't really say whether or not a state is in equilibrium or not on its own, um, as the expression will always vary in time. We can, however, track the expectation value of some observable A in time and see if that expectation value approaches a stationary value. In the video on the eigenstate thermalization hypothesis, we were wondering how an observable's expectation value could possibly flow to an equilibrium value uh, that reflected the averages we do in statistical mechanics. Where here in this equation, the expectation value with the subscript beta uh, is just the microcanonical or canonical average. One thing that we took for granted in that video, however, was that the expectation value would evolve to some stationary point or value in time. In this video, we won't take that for granted, and instead we will study equilibration, the dynamical process at which our system will go to static equilibrium. So first things first, if the expectation value of our observable does reach some equilibrium value in time, what would that value have to be? Just like in the ETH video, it would be equal to its infinite time average, as it should be there forever after equilibrium is reached. This is of course up to recursions if the system is finite, uh, but in principle we are interested in extremely big systems here. So we expect uh, fluctuations around equilibrium to be uh, quite small. So let's denote the equilibrium expectation value uh, as having a subscript infinity. Then the infinite time average of our observable is given by the following formula. And to reiterate, this formula is telling us the average of the expectation value of the observable A over all time from zero to infinity. So the average value on that interval. With this definition, it will be useful to name the distance to equilibrium as the following function uh, that we'll call d of t. And d of t will be defined as the difference between the expectation value and time, subtracting off the infinite time average, and we'll square this whole expression. So now that we have uh, this language, let's jump into an example to gain intuition. If you've seen the eigenstate thermalization video, uh, this example will be familiar to you, uh, but keep watching because we're going to explore it from a different angle. So I'm going to show you an example of an out of equilibrium system that goes to equilibrium. The system I will show uh, is a quantum spin model on a one dimensional lattice. The spins will interact uh, with their neighbors and their next nearest neighbors. So for example, uh, nearest neighbor terms in the Hamiltonian uh, will look something like the following expression, where J1 and delta1 are choosable parameters, which we can choose at the time of simulation. We will likewise have next nearest neighbor interactions. Uh, so we'll have terms like the following expression. The model is going to be periodic on the boundaries uh, to allow for some extra block diagonalization. So for all of the examples today, we are going to track the poly Z matrix as our observable A, and we will put it on lattice site two. We will initialize our system in such a way that our spins start anti-aligned with their neighbors in the Z direction. So we'll have the following state. 
In this first animation, we will watch the expectation value of A in time and also track the distance to equilibrium as time goes on. So in the simulation I'm about to show you, the Hamiltonian has 22 spins. Okay, so that's pretty cool, right? Even for a small system size of 22 spins, we see the dynamics relax with small fluctuations around the equilibrium value. Now, of course, just because this example shows us our observable approaching some static equilibrium type value, this does not guarantee that this type of behavior is generic. We can't just assume that we will always see something that looks like static equilibrium, right? This could be a biased example. In 2008, Riemann, and then later in 2011, Short published articles giving us sufficient conditions for when we expect static equilibrium to emerge. I won't prove the result here, but I will set up the problem and then state the result. First things first, we are going to make an assumption on the energy eigenvalues of our Hamiltonian. That assumption will be that we have non-degenerate energy gaps. So what does this mean? For any four eigenvalues, we will have the following expression. So EK minus EL is equal to EM minus EN, which means that EK is equal to EL and EM is equal to EN, or we'll have that EK is equal to EM and EL is equal to EN. So what this tells us is that all of the energy gaps are unique. The crucial result in these articles is an upper bound on our distance function in time, telling us on average how far our expectation value is from its equilibrium value. So restating it, the distance function we have, d of t, is the following expression. We want to know how big this is on average over all time. We will call this average uh, sigma squared with a subscript a for our observable a. So we are going to take the infinite time average of d of t, and this is given by the following expression. And it turns out that you can bound this expression from above by the following formula. The a in the operator norm notation should be understood as the largest singular value of a. Now to understand the sum. Well, bringing back our definition of the state, the CM terms are our probability amplitudes for our eigenstates, and the CM modulo squared would be the probabilities. So in the summation, we see that we have the squares of the probabilities all summed up. Then the intuition is the following. If we have a lot of energy eigenstates participating in the dynamics in a meaningful way, meaning that the corresponding CMs aren't too small relative to the other ones, then the sum of the squares of the probabilities should be extremely small. And for a lot of situations, that seems to be the case. This expression or this upper bound can also be understood in terms of purity. Let's define the density matrix rho as the following expression, so the outer product of our pure state psi. Expanding this in the energy eigenbasis, we get the following expression. So due to our assumption on the energy eigenvalues and the non-degenerate uh, gaps, the only terms in the expression that are independent of time are the ones where m and n are equal. The other terms will continuously rotate in the complex plane forever. So if we define the infinite time average state omega, the only terms that are independent of time are those on the diagonal, so when m is equal to n, and we get the following expression for the infinite time average state. 
So this is a mixed state that we call the diagonal ensemble, which gives us the infinite time expectation value of our observables. So for example, we could rewrite the infinite time average of the expectation value of our observable A in the following way in terms of omega. We can then look back at our bound and we could rewrite it in terms of the purity of omega. So that was definitely a long-winded explanation, uh, but the moral of the story is as long as we have a lot of energy eigenkets participating in the dynamics, and there aren't a few energy eigenkets with extremely large weight uh, all on their own, we should eventually see static equilibrium. So these statements are extremely cool and worth knowing, but a stronger result would perhaps be a statement about finite time rather than infinite time. There has been some progress uh, in this direction, but unfortunately no general statement I can make that singles out perhaps a large class of models and initial conditions uh, that doesn't exist yet. So what I'll leave you with instead is some cool intuition about what equilibration in finite time actually looks like um, so consider our expectation value of A in time, and let's expand it out in the energy eigenbasis. So here we've made the notation choice to call the entries of the observable A uh, as the following expression. This is just to, to make the notation a little bit shorter and easier to read. Now I'm going to pair each M and N term into a new parameter alpha, and we will call the terms in the sum now V of alpha. And then we can further assign time dependency to our V of alpha terms like the following expression. So rewriting our dynamics uh, purely for visualization reasons, we get the following sum. So what we have is an extremely large amount of complex numbers that rotate around in the complex plane. Our configuration at t is equal to zero might be initially very ordered, uh, but as time goes on, we should expect a swarm of points and a big blob cycling around the equilibrium value on the real part of the complex plane. This blob or swarm of points uh, should appear uh, relatively quickly around this equilibrium-like configuration surrounding our equilibrium spot. And so once we have this big cloud around equilibrium, we might be able to guess that we've reached equilibrium. Since our expectation value is always real, the image should be symmetric with respect to reflections uh, about the real axis. So just for fun, let's actually watch uh, one of these big sums in action, or instead we're going to track each individual V alpha point uh, in time. So let's get back to our example with our spin chain and our observable A. In this case, uh, we will only show the complex numbers rotating in the complex plane for 18 spins. This animation uh, processed over 100 gigabytes of data. Uh, so any system size higher was quickly filling up my memory. I couldn't go farther than this, unfortunately. But without further ado, let's watch Equilibration in action. <laughs> So that's it for today, everyone. I hope you liked the video. If you did, feel free to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below.